We're going to talk now about numeric variables. So again, variables are characteristics that vary between the elements that we're measuring. And numeric variables are important because we can do math on them. And we can start to look for patterns and start to do summary statistics, such as the mean and the standard deviation and so on. Numeric variables can be classified into two general types. The first of these are discrete data. A discrete data, a discrete variable is something that you can count, something that you can make little hatch marks with. One, two, three. There are things that happen in nice round numbers, such as the number of live births by a woman or the bouts of diarrhea in a child. We did a project at Tufts in Ecuador on vitamin A and zinc supplementation. And the main outcome was how many bouts of diarrhea did a child have? Well, what is half of a bout of diarrhea or a quarter of a bout of diarrhea? There's no such thing. So these things are all measured in counts. How about the number of falls in an elderly? We can go like this. This is an example. This baseball bat here is from Babe Ruth, one of the greatest home run hitters of all time. And whenever he would hit a home run, he would take his pen knife out of his pocket and he would put a little notch in his bat, just like this. Now, at the bottom half of this slide, we see some other types of variables that would be measured as discrete. For example, your age in years. Think for a second, if someone asks you, how old are you? You might say 23, 24, but that doesn't mean today's your birthday. Technically you're 23 point something. But anyone who says I'm 23 and a half, that's weird. That's a really weird answer to give. Unless you are under the age of six, you don't give half years. You sort of take that number and you turn it into a discrete variable. So we see that these top things, again, defined by the variable itself. And then the bottom things will be defined by the researchers. What do we make those categories? So discrete variables. Now, richer than discrete are actual continuous Variables. A continuous variable you can measure as precisely as the measurement device that you have. If you have two people who say, I'm five foot six, they're not actually the same height. If you had a better, better tape measure, you could actually see that one person is somehow a little bit taller than the other. And so continuous data are things such as time or the measurement of an enzyme um, or the measurement of anything that can take a range of sort of values. So we're gonna think that continuous data and the discrete data that we just had are richer because we can do math on them. And that allows us again to make comparisons and, uh, and to find differences between treatments or groups or so on. Um, we often take continuous data and turn it into discrete. Again, how old are you? I'm 43,000 days old, that's weird. You would just say what you're, what you're, how many years old you are. Um, oftentimes, we take discrete data and we analyze it as continuous. How many kids does the average American have? 2.4. That's fine. You can say that even though you can't have 0.4 of a kid. Now, there's also a type of continuous data. There's a little subtlety between interval data and ratio data. So interval data is where the scale is not set on zero. So if you think about temperature, for example, uh, if today it's 80 degrees, that doesn't mean it's twice as hot as 40 degrees, because if you're in a different country, you might go by a different scale. Uh, ratio data, however, have that zero point. So you can say that somebody is twice as tall as someone else, but you couldn't say that somebody is twice as hot, well, I guess twice as hot as someone else if you measured their temperature. Now, when we look at all these types of data, we said in uh, the previous uh, class that there's a hierarchy to them. And that as we look at data and go from ordinal, sorry, nominal, ordinal, discrete, continuous, the data become richer. And we can always move our data down this hierarchy. If I told you that I had a friend who was 72 years old, discrete, right? Is that person a senior citizen? Yes or no? Are you going to say yes? But if I told you I had a friend who was a senior citizen, how old is he? You don't know. You can't go back up that scale. So what types of variable you have? We'll go to this question again and again. It's important because it's going to dictate what is the thing that you're, well, it's, it, what is the thing you're measuring? How are you measuring it? 
And who is the researcher deciding it? That's the type of variable. And then it's going to determine how we look at our data, how we summarize it, and then which statistical tests that we, that we run.